Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where today we're starting a brand new series and in this one Mark who you'll know and remember well from the Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 run through and also from the GTA videos has decided to brave the um, the, the might of the uh, of the dreaded Pyanodons mod and this one for anyone who's not familiar with it is considered to be one of the biggest most complicated and most time consuming mods that's ever been made for Factorio so it makes the sort of little 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 conversions like space exploration or um, angel bobs look like almost nothing um, i've heard it said that creating the first science packs in um, the first science pack in pyanodons or is uh, roughly equivalent to launching a rocket in vanilla factorio <clears throat> And the entire game is can can take well, who knows? We'll uh, we'll we'll find out as as Mark gets further into it. But he's currently well, looking at the clock at the top there. He's 13 hours into it so far, um, and he's made some good progress. But this is episode zero, so we're not going to be talking about how far he's got in it. So uh, particularly, we're going to be taking having a bit of a discussion of sort of the basics of the Pioneer mods um, and how it makes things more complicated. But mostly, we're going to concentrate on on the uh, list of mods he's decided to, to play this game with, um, because there's there's quite a few of them. So obviously we've started off with, with Pyanodons, there's the coal processing, fusion energy industry, raw ores, high tech, petroleum handling, alien life and alternative energy. Those will get get him the sort of the basics of the of all of the um, all the various different mods that he's, uh, he's going to have to play with and, and work work his way through. And if we look in the science thing you'll see here there is an enormous, wow this is an enormously long list of, of, uh, of researchers to work through here. So uh, although he's got quite a chunk of them done so far, so he's, he's certainly made a start. Um, and then he's, he's also installed a number of other ones that sort of that there's I've split them up into sort of two, two kind of two sections uh, there are the ones that are basically just a simple quality of life ones that make relatively small impacts and then the ones that have a slightly larger impact so we'll start with the larger impact because they're a bit more interesting um, the first one of those is file the fully automatic rail laying layer and now this isn't particularly relevant yet because as you can see that he hasn't he hasn't developed trains and that's going to be probably a hundred hours off right I don't know maybe more than maybe several hundred hours off we shall see we shall see how it all goes for him um, but the idea of file is that you're able to then build a special construction locomotive that's able to put down uh, rail as fast as the train goes, including filling in uh, water with landfill if you've got enough in the um, in 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 the uh, in the wagons, destroying rocks, uh, sorry, destroying cliffs if you've got the cliff explosives, and also picking up any stone and trees and anything like that that's in the way. So you can just storm straight across the landscape, laying laying rail incredibly quickly. And it's yeah, it's a very handy mod to have if you're if you're going to be doing lots of um, lots of rail expansion. So I can I can. Totally, totally understand having that one. He's added in AAI loaders, so we've got very used to having loaders from um, playing space exploration. He's going to be, we're going to be very handy having those available and uh, making sure that he can build, he, he can fill up, uh, fill up warehouses, fill up trains, and nice and quickly with them. He's installed the grappling gun mod as well. Uh, so the grappling gun is it's, it's a sort of bit like uh, it allows you to sort of play Spider-Man. You can fire out a grappling hook across the map to a, a certain distance, probably about probably about this sort of distance, I guess, and then it will immediately reel you in to that point, which is great for getting around quickly if you don't have the space exploration jetpack, which he won't because he's not playing space exploration. And yeah, we, we played around that with with that a bit in in the space exploration run before we had before we had the uh, the jetpacks, and it's great until you accidentally launch yourself into right into the middle of a biter nest with it. Although that said, if you do accidentally launch yourself into the middle of a bite nest, you can you probably get yourself back out of trouble again very, very quickly in exactly the same way. He's also got RSO installed, which I believe is the resource something or other overhaul. So that cha that, that allows you to tweak, ha tweak your resource patches and maybe set up uh, patches that are much much deeper and denser. So there's a lot more ore in them rather than... Rather, uh, so you... And, uh, has, has he done that? I mean, the, these these patches look very very big for the for for, for a starting place. He's got, um, for example, there's a borax patch of 8.8 .8 million there, uh, two and a half million zinc up here. There's 17 million iron ore. So I suspect this has been this has been he's bumped up the um the, the the level of the amount of resource you get in each of these patches. And to be fair. Given the way um, Pyanodons goes, the challenge here is in all of the recipes you're trying to put together rather than in going out and finding enough ore. So I can kind of understand him doing that. It does make a lot of sense. He's got squeak through installed, which means you can run through sort of very narrow gaps between buildings. So if I, if I come across here, I, here actually you'll know all these. I'll, all of these are fairly well spaced out. But it allows you to, I, I think it allows you to go through gaps between uh, pipes that don't actually exist like that. So where, where a space exploration has just allows you to run over the top of pipes, this, the squeak through will give you that little bit of extra space between buildings and things allowing you to run around between them like that and again this is a quality of life mod it's there to just make moving around the map a bit easier 
He's got text plates installed. That is a, a mod that allows you to basically write onto the onto the ground. Um, each each text plate you put down requires a small amount of uh, resource to make it. For example, down here we've got the steel text plates. It takes um, it takes one steel plate to make a small one. It takes four to make a large one. It's not a significant amount of resource. You, you can make a few of these, and then you can then you can you, you can write something like this, um, and then just place it down on the on the uh, on, on the ground like that. Uh, so it's a nice 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 quick and easy way to, uh, to 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 put down labels and and allow you to keep track of which bit of your factory is which. Um, oh, he's got a time tools mod. So that'll be what this is up here. This allows you to speed up the game when you're ooh, to very, 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 very fast. So the idea is, in the early game, it allows you to speed up how quickly time passes um, to 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 uh, get to, to, so, so that when you when you're waiting for an enormous amount of something to be generated, you can you can speed that up a bit so you're not grinding in quite the same way. In most Factorio mods, that's not required. I've I've heard that it is need it is very useful in C block because there is a lot of grinding and waiting for things to happen there. But most of the time in Factorio, if you're waiting for something to happen, that that's just a sign that you should build another thing to build whatever it is that you're waiting for. He's also got the companion drones. And that's the I assume that's these little critters who are following me around here. And um, I presume they they can be used to, to build stuff. Um, although not that. What do I actually have in my pockets? Is okay. Yeah. So they have built those. If I put down some belts across there as a uh, yeah, there we go. So the uh, the bots will now snatch those belts out of my inventory and build them up. So you see, it's an, it's an early game bot system because it, the early the early part of Factorio tends to be very very frustrating when you're when you're running around having to actually build everything by hand, especially if you're doing blueprinting. So if I cop if you copy and paste a large chunk of stuff like this, then you don't really want to have to go around doing building up everything by hand because it'll be slow and frustrating and just and fiddly to get all the all the right buildings in the right places. So if you've got bots to do this sort of thing for you, it's much, much easier. And you can also use them to demolish things as well, I imagine. Yes, there we go. So they're they're, they're great for sort of quickly quickly putting putting down sets of buildings and things like that. But because they're, little, they're because there are a set of four of them that just float around the player, they're not as powerful as the later game construction bots. So it still gives you the incentive to to, uh, to carry on doing the research. So those are the sort of the big ones that will make make sort of big differences to how the game works. He's also included uh, wire shortcuts, which gives you essentially gives you free cables. So when you when you're setting up circuit network conditions on things, you don't need to worry about making cables in quite the same way you do in um, in normal in, in normal fa in vanilla Factorio. I I don't know how exactly how it works, but it allows you to lay cables down between buildings for free. He's also got alien biomes installed, and that's another space exploration adjacent one. And the idea is that it gives you more interesting terrain. So if we, around here, things look more or less sort of... I was going to say they look pretty much Vanilla Factorio, but it's been so long since I've actually played Vanilla Factorio, I'm really not sure about that. But I think if I go over this way, the um, this sort of purpley stuff that you can see approaching on the map may well be an alien biomes... Um, Color. And so as he goes further out into, into the field, he's probably going to find some more interesting terrain types because of the Alien Biomes mod. Uh, he's got an Auto Deconstruct mod applied as well, so when a drill runs out of, um, has pulled up all of the resource in an area, it will automatically be marked for deconstruction, so you'll, um, it, it just keeps your, keeps your mining areas a bit tidier. He's got death markers turned on, so every time he dies, it'll, there'll be a big thing put on the map to say, to say so. Uh, we've been doing that manually in our space exploration run, but I suppose this makes it a little bit easier. Um, however, I believe he's also playing without biters, which again is very, very sensible, because I think pyanodons will be more than hard enough even, w uh, even without biters. You don't need the extra challenge for that. Um, even distribution is included as well, so if you want to put down... Um, if you've got a load of stuff in your inventory... And you want to unload it into a into the um, some nearby machines? You can just press Shift C, and there you go. You can see it's dumped a load of coal into all of these mining into all these furnaces down here. Alternatively, you can select something from your inventory and then drag it across a load of a load of um, machines, and it'll it'll evenly split the uh, resource between them. And that's really handy for loading things like burner uh, burner furnaces until you, before you've got the burner set up. Uh, it's good for uh, emptying random junk out of your inventory that always just builds up in there, and it's great for loading t loading up turrets. But again, turrets aren't going to be so much of an issue in this because there's no biters. Uh, we've got a, a factory search. I assume that's a, a thing that will tell you where something is being made in your factory. So with Pyanodons being such a big mod pack, you're going to have an enormous factory eventually, and it's going to it's going to be really difficult to find where certain things are being made. So being able to search them is going to be very very useful. Kind of wish we had that in the space exploration run because that one, in a way, that's worse because there's so many of us playing it that the chances are somebody else built whatever it is you're looking for. So you're uh, a search would be fantastic to find out where on earth they'd built it. Now he's got gun turret alerts set up. So that that's a mod that tells you when your turrets run out of ammunition, and I don't know whether that's just out of habit or whether it's something that he, uh, or whether he actually does have biters turned on. And I just 
assumed he didn't, um, because that is because you're not really going to be putting out gun turrets if there aren't any biters, I don't think. So it's, it's a slightly odd one to have. Oh, oh, he's got handy hands. This is, this is one that will automatically build up to um, a certain number of, of items. So if you've got, if you say, for example, if you set a, a thousand transport belts being the number you want, with handy hands, you're, you're, you will automatically pocket craft up to that certain amount. Now, I'm not sure where that's set up. Maybe it's... No, I don't know where that's set up, and I, I'm not even sure how to turn it on. But it is... It, oh, here we go. Um, you can turn it on by clicking the button down here, but, it, but it's not given that's not working... Oh, no, it has worked. Um, so it will now auto... Presumably, it will auto craft up to a cer certain numbers of the various things that I want to... Uh, I want, want, want to have. Uh, an inventory repair, similarly, will automatically repair anything in your inventory that's damaged. So you've got a stack of repair packs here. So if we had a... If, if we have... I don't know. Let's, 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 let's do an example. If I put down a furnace here, and then shoot it a bit, my bots are going to automatically repair it, but if I then grab it back up again, it will automatically be repaired in my inventory, and that means you don't end up with silly numbers of, um, of broken broken buildings. Oh, and I noticed um, I seem to have gained an extra um, furnace, so if I take half of these, if I take all of those away, they see I can, I'm automatically now handcrafting more more to replace them. That's the handy hands mod in, in action, so I've now got an extra ten of them than I than I meant to have. But the idea is that as you go around placing stuff, it means it'll keep you up to, it will keep you uh, supplied with all the bits and pieces you're, uh, you're using as, as, as you go around. There's a similar one as well for crafting nearby ghosts. So if um if again if, if there was if there was some ghosts set up and I didn't have the uh, didn't have the um the machine to build whatever ghost it was, then again it would automatically handcraft that machine in in your inventory. And again, these things are just easy. There are ways to make the early game easier when you're going around. You 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 you're trying to build stuff up by hand. So you want the bots to go out and do the building for you. And it's much easier if you'll just if you just always have the supplies on on hand. So you'll still have to go off and get the ingredients for them. So for example, if I if I didn't have any stone available. If we got rid of all of that and then got rid of the stone furnaces, it's not going to be able to build any more furnaces. But as soon as I get some more stone in my inventory, then chump, 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 it starts making it starts making them again. So you've got that that control. Oh, whilst it's not it's not cheating because you can't build anything you don't have the stuff for. It's just one let one left one fewer thing to worry about. And trust me, in Pioneer, he's going to have much bigger things to worry about than whether he's built enough enough stone furnaces. Got long reach installed, of course, because well, of course you do. You don't want to play Factorio without long reach, and that allows you to to fiddle with things that are quite long distance away. Now, for some reason, I'm getting cannot reaches from this, but, um, so, long reach appears to not be reaching quite as far as it should. But in theory, long reach means you can interact with absolutely anything you can see on your normal view. So I'd be able to put down some belt over here, um, um, put down, put, pick up things that are in the wrong place, all that sort of stuff. You can interact with and uh, look, look in buildings, and anything you normally would need to go up and, and stick your face up against the building to do, you can do from as far away as you can see it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working right now, but I have I am aware that long reach is sometimes a little bit fragile and you need to fiddle with the mod settings when it breaks. <laughs> there is a timer mod installed as well. I that might be this timer up here, the one that's telling us that we've been going for 13 and a half hours so far. Um auto trash. I, I don't know how that's different from what you can normally just set up in here, but um yeah, I don't know how that differs. Uh, he's got bottleneck installed, so or bottleneck light rather. That puts these coloured little coloured blobs on the uh, on the machines around the around the base, telling you. So essentially, you've got you've got green for a machine that's running happily. You've got red on machines that don't have enough input, and yellow on machines like these that don't have room to output. So they're, they're, they, this one this one is completely full of everything it's going to be able to put, uh, dig up. It hasn't got anywhere to unload to. This one can't run because it doesn't have any inputs, and these ones are running happily. Uh, it's got a cursor enhancements, which means that you have a smarter a smarter cursor, which will um, place ghosts automatically. Um, presumably, that means as you start when you when you if you if I put down uh, my chests like that, if I put down some chests like this. Yeah, when you run out, it automatically switches over to placing ghosts. That's quite handy. Might have to might have to install that one myself later. Uh, milestones is one that tells you how you're getting on as you go through the game. I'm not sure where to find that, but I've seen I've seen other people using it, and it means every 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 time you achieve something impressive, like getting the first science pack, in, or um, it has a pop up that tells you, "Well done, you've achieved this thing," and it took you only took you so many hours to do it. <laughs> so that'll be nice. It'll, it'll give him some pop ups to tell him how he's getting on. Module inserter is, is is a mod I'm very familiar with. It allows you to set up things like, that are a bit like um, construction or deconstruction blueprints, um, except they're for putting modules into specific buildings. So you could say, I want to put productivity modules into all assembly machines, then drag that over an area, and it will put ghost modules into those machines, telling the bots to then fly over and put them in. So he's going to find that very useful once he gets to the stage where he's actually got modules, which I'm assuming he hasn't yet. Um, doesn't look like it, but eventually he will. There's recipe book, which I think is like a bit like FNEI. It tells you when it tells you how to make stuff. Um, it's, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a variation on something that I'm not personally familiar with, so I don't I don't know exactly well what it looks like or even where it is for that matter. Oh, here we go, recipe book. So you could look you could look in here for I don't know. Um, 
search for furnaces. And so we can say so here we here we can see we 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 know about stone furnaces. We don't know, but we don't know how to make steel furnaces yet. We do know how to make high pressure furnaces. Let's have a look at that one. So to make that requires um, all of these things. Oh no, no, it can make these things. Or I could look up a circuit, and there we go. I could look for a simple circuit board, and we can see what it goes into. And I was expecting it to tell me what goes into it as well, but I don't see that. But anyway, it's, it's a way of looking through the uh, looking through the supplies and, and trying to work out what's uh, what you need. Oh, here we go. Here's how here's how you make it. There's there's one recipe for it, and it takes those things. You've got task list installed, so it allows you to set up a to do list inside the game. Uh, factory planner for choosing to, to working out how many um, how many various different types of buildings he's going to need for everything, and the GUI unifier, which uh, makes all the buttons look a bit more consistent. So if someone's gone through and found or uh, looked at lots and lots of the uh, popular Factorio mods and uh, gone through and made the icons all look a little bit more a little bit more consistent and coherent, so it, it makes it look like they all belong together. Uh, so that is the, that is the mod list. Uh, yes, there's quite a lot of them. Um, <laughs> you'll be not, not be particularly surprised to hear that because well, Pyonodons is, is is a big mod pack, and when you get to that sort of, the sort of stage of playing the bigger mods, you then end up wanting quite a lot of um, quite a lot of help, should we say? And you just want things that will smooth out the uh, the simple annoyances in the game and make it a bit easier to play. So I think that's a good that's going to be um, a good place to stop this video. As I say, this is, this has been episode zero. It's giving you a bit of a summary of the mod pack that he's playing and the other ones that have been put in to make things a little bit well, a little bit saner. Um, and then in the next episode, we shall uh, have take a look at how far he's got so far. And I believe he's got at least some. Well, he's got clearly got a, a research pack up and running because all of these ones down here have been done. But next next uh, next episode, we'll have a look into how that works, what he's got up to, and how and um, and what he's able to do with it. So, thanks for watching. I hope you'll come along and join me next week, and uh, when we shall t um, delve into it a bit more deeply. Thanks for again, and I'll see you then.